I want to um, begin by acknowledging uh, the traditional owners of the land on which we're gathered and pay my respects to Elders past and present. Um, I want to acknowledge the Governor, the Honourable Linda Dassault AC and Mr Anthony Howard, Lizzie Blanthorne, the Parliamentary Secretary for Sport, um, all of the Change Our Game ambassadors and champions, uh, our state sporting body presidents and CEOs, uh, our keynote speaker Tracy Holmes, um, our panellists, uh, Mel Jones. This is the second event that Mel and I have been at today uh, together, the first one being uh, the uh, recognition of the fact that we are one year to the day away from the Women's T20 World Cup final at the MCG. Uh, and we set a world record this morning for the uh, biggest number of signatures on a piece of sporting memorabilia. And 12 months from today, we want to set another world record being the biggest ever crowd at a women's sporting event. And if we sell out the G, that is what we will have um, for the Women's T20 World Cup final. And in between that event and this event, I've been to the world's longest lunch um, where I managed to get entree in. But that was a lunch where 1,600 people um, were being uh, had lunch prepared for them by three women chefs. Uh, Nikki Ream has made uh, entree, uh, Karen Martini main, and Law Lauren Eldridge dessert. And uh, I'm sure uh, main and dessert will be as magnificent as entree was. Uh, but there is a massive uh, and wonderful celebration of all of the amazing things that women can do today, uh, whether it be in sport or in the culinary delights, or indeed, as Bridie said, in, uh, in sports broadcasting. And I haven't forgotten to mention the other panellists, Patrick Shaw, Steph Hansen and Steve Watley. Um, I am really um, happy to be here today. It made me... Um, Bridie's uh, speech made me think about what was the most remarkable bit of footage of women's sport that, that I have seen. And the one that sprung to mind was actually uh, one that I'm sure many of you have seen was Kathy Switzer in the 1967 Boston Marathon when uh, she snuck into the race in a race that was all men uh, because at the beginning of the, of the race it was inclement weather and everyone had hoodies on and nobody noticed that she was a woman. Uh, and she'd registered only with Kay Switzer so that, again, nobody knew that she'd registered as a woman. So she had a numbered bib. And she was running in the marathon in a group of people, um, including uh, amongst them being her boyfriend, a bloke called Tom Miller. And uh, the uh, TV van uh, which was filming the race went past and one of the race officials who was on, that, uh, on the back of that truck saw Kathy Switzer running and decided that the smart thing for him to do would be to jump off the truck, chase her and try and rip her number off. Uh, which, he, which he then proceeded to do. I don't know if anyone's seen the footage, but um, uh, Switzer, Kathy Switzer's boyfriend watching this then gave, uh, uh, then gave Semple one of the world's best hip and shoulders, put him into the gutter, uh, and she bolted off with an entourage around her. And even though she finished the race in something like four and a half hours, she said that she had never been... Uh, more determined to finish anything in her life because she said, if I don't finish this race, it will be a sign to girls and women everywhere that women just can't run marathons. And she finished, despite being accosted in that way. Uh, and from that moment on, women's participation in marathon running took off. So for me, that was one of the most iconic moments uh, I've, I've, I've ever seen in women's sport. And uh, when you listen to some of the stories that Bridie told about uh, the performances of women in marathons after that, it wouldn't have probably been possible. I, I, I think Kathy Switzer probably brought it forward by a decade by the way that she conducted herself that day. Um, I just want to talk about uh, some of the things that the government uh, uh, is doing. And, and, and in, you know, in this regard, government is really no more than a facilitator. Um, we have to provide the environment and the facilities and the funding and the support. Um, the activity and the impetus is coming from girls and women themselves and from sporting organisations. Uh, but we are, um, we are really proud of things that we've done in regards to female-friendly facilities. Um, we uh, are announcing today that there will be another round of, our, of the Change Our Game scholarship program, which provides women with the opportunity um, to reach their full potential in off-field roles uh, and helps influence how sport and recreation is delivered. Uh, and we see so many wonderful examples now of uh, women in sporting administration, quite apart from Bridie. I mean, I, I think of the portfolio that I had before I took over sport, tourism and major events 
uh, and I've been Minister for Racing, and um, I, I think about the women that are on, you know, Amanda Elliott is a very high profile example as chairman of the VRC, uh, but we have great women like Jane Brooke on the board of Harness Racing Victoria, uh, women like uh, Catherine Ainsworth, women uh, like uh, on, on the board of Racing Victoria like Sharon McCrowan and Tate Joel, um, women on the boards of all of our principal racing clubs and many of the CEOs of our country racing clubs are women as well. Um, so we have some remarkable examples of women in sporting administration and I'm just starting to meet many of them now in my new portfolio role um, but I already met um, many, many extraordinary and remarkable female sporting administrators uh, in my role as Minister for Racing. But one of the great components of Change Our Game is the importance of uh, young girls seeing their female sporting heroes on TV or featured prominently in newspapers. There was an image I saw about, I think it was two or three weeks ago, and, I, and I'm, I'm almost certain it was the North Melbourne AFLW team, and the North Melbourne women had just scored a goal and um, they had run towards the crowd to celebrate and some intrepid photographer caught this fantastic image of the North Melbourne AFLW players celebrating with the crowd and the crowd was just a bunch of young girls in North Melbourne jumpers and you could see the excitement in their face and it was just a, you know, in one moment it just encapsulated the power of role models and the power that a sporting image can have in teaching young girls that really there are no limits to what they can achieve. So to the extent that initiative helps with publicising um, those sort of role models and to the extent that um, our, you know, our provision of infrastructure can help as well, um, it is something that the government really needs to continue to do and I can assure you that we will. And in that regard, um, the work that Lizzie Blanthorne as Parliamentary Secretary for Sport will do over the next four years will be incredibly important as well. And Lizzie and I have known each other a long time. I can assure you we will work exceptionally well together and there's so much that we can do. Um, I think it is also just worth remarking on the fact that, you know, there are stories happening every week um, that demonstrate uh, the amazing strides that our sporting, our female sporting teams are making. Uh, the Matildas having a, a big win at Amy Park on Wednesday over Argentina as preparation for the World Cup in June. Um, the announcement by the FFA uh, just this week that Melbourne is the preferred home for the Matildas uh, and the government will work closely with Football Federation Victoria to try and make that a reality. Uh, I've already mentioned the fact that we're one year till the Women's T20 World Cup final, but we've been watching with, uh, I think, you know, amazement the um, performances of our women's cricket team over the summer. And, of course, we're seeing uh, AFLW just going from strength to strength. And I don't, in saying that, leave out any of the other um, amazing performances in women's sport, uh, in netball and basketball and hockey and so many other sports that we've been uh, privileged enough to witness over the last uh, 12 months. So um, I think that's um, probably all you need to hear from me. I, I know that you've been told by Brody to keep eating while the speeches are on, but I also noticed that most of you don't, and I'm very appreciative of that, so I want to let you get back to your meal. Uh, but look, the government will be um, a, a, a constant, a reliable and a resolute partner um, of women's sport. Um, we have been over recent years, and that will certainly continue. Um, and together, I just want to see us all provide um, that encouragement and that role model for young girls to reach for the stars uh, and so many of the people in this room are doing that every day of their life, so thank you.